Hello, everyone. Uh, before I start this episode, I just want to give a really heartfelt thank you to everyone who's uh, supported the channel, subscribed, commented, liked, etc., disliked even. Um, it's been amazing, some of the responses and some of the things I've been able to learn as I've uh, looked into this. And yeah, it's certainly, it's just a really uh, interesting, fascinating subject. And it's obviously drawn the attention of a lot of people now. And yeah, I'm looking forward to investigating it further and, and going into it. And, and, and the, one of the main, or well, one of the amazing things about it is that it seems to be a real uh, community uh, driven thing where a lot of people are questioning and hang on, something's not quite right there. And uh, yeah, so Thank you again. I'm looking forward to doing more of these videos and sort of expanding upon what I've already done. And um, yeah, we'll bring more in the future. Thank you. All right. So today we're going to look at the Trans Mississippi Exposition in Omaha, Nebraska. I've never I've been to America a few times, but never to Nebraska. So I don't really know the area around there too well. But um, this one is this one has actually given me pause for thought because. Um, there are many uh, construction photos of this particular World's Fair. Uh, I mean, it's really hard to, to determine one way or the other. I think if you haven't um, seen any of my previous videos to this, I want to reiterate and 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 um, really sort of um, want to make sure that everyone understands that what I'm when I'm doing when I'm looking into this, I'm, I'm keeping a very objective perspective on it. I'm looking at it from all angles and wanting to um, not go too far down one way or the other. Like I'm, I'm always going to keep that one sort of aspect or element of my, of my mind that this could have been constructed in the timelines that they said they were and all this, but the weight of evidence from what I've seen uh, looks like it's these um, buildings and the grounds upon which they sit or the waterways, etc. cetera, um, were most probably built well before um, it's said they were. And so the reasons for that um, are many and varied and it's something that we'll investigate in further videos. And there's, there's lots of other uh, people doing amazing stuff on YouTube, especially um, with their channels on this sort of thing. So please, um, if you want to, more information, sort it out. But yeah, the the first uh, two World's Fairs I covered were the Chicago World's Fair and the St. Louis, Missouri World's Fair. So have a look at some of the previous videos that I've done in regards to those. Uh, but this one we're going to look at uh, this this uh, Trans Mississippi one in Omaha, Nebraska. So again, similarly uh, type of neoclassical Greco-Roman type architecture. This is obviously a painting, um, not a photo image. But again, you can see the grand scale of this thing. This this particular one, we'll go through some of the uh, data on it. But this particular one is quite a bit smaller than the Chicago and St. Louis one. Um, so I think that may tie into what's going on with this one, but you can still see it takes up a significant area. So I'll just zoom in. Hopefully this works out all right. You can see um, this is the original layout. So you have the main waterway through here, with the larger buildings um, encircling it. Uh, there's a river or lake that comes down here. Um, some another couple of larger buildings here, but you can see on, on a scale of things, this is quite a deal smaller, um, substantially smaller than uh, especially the St. Louis uh, Fair, but also the Chicago Fair. And you see sort of how it looks. This is now all that remains as a park in in the uh, area in here. So this park here would have been about in this center section here, um, and then the rest of it's being built out residential. So it gives you sort of some understanding of the scale of this thing. Uh, zoom back out. This um, artist depiction of, of the aerial view of the Expo grounds, you mean you can see it, it does look quite magnificent. I mean, it's hard to say sort of how accurate this is, but, you know, if this is accurate, it looks like a typical palatial grounds that you would see um, in many of these uh, old images of these these fairs, especially from this aerial perspective that uh, many of them uh, have have had created. Um, 
So I'm going to go back to this image a little bit later. And then here we see some of the, the uh, buildings that were there. It seems to be definitely a lot, a lot lower in scale, a lot smaller in scale than the other two, the New York buildings. So I think like definitely sort of these type of buildings and this this size were definitely built in the in the timeline that they said they were. Um, but I do still struggle with some of these larger buildings and uh, the timelines given for them because it's just a. A, a tremendous amount of work, in, including the civil works, um, which they they sit upon. It's it's a gargantuan effort to do so. So, coming back down to this, so um, yeah, the the Trans Mississippi and International Exposition was a World's Fair held in Omaha, Nebraska, from June first to November first, in eighteen ninety eight. Uh, just the usual thing used to showcase the development of the West and, and our technological marvels of the time. Um, let's say about 2.6 million people came through. Um, the expo stretched over 180 acre tract in North Omaha and featured 200 foot lagoon, which is 610 meters long, quite a large lagoon, encircled by 21 classical buildings that featured fine and modern products from around the world. Uh, so the timeline that they've given um, is that the decision to hold the um, exposition was made in late 1895. So if we say end of, end of 1895 to June 1898, that's a 86, 87. So it's a two and a half year period. Again, that same period, same as Chicago. They've given a two and a half year period to build uh, all of this. All the landscaping. Again, I can't uh, undervalue the the um, amount of work it would have taken for the civil infrastructure. Like I say, everything ground level and below to um, to then have the the buildings placed on top. It's just a tremendous amount of work. So two and a half years. Um, so 400 acres of land, just a huge amount of land. Construction. So many temporary building structures and features are installed for the exposition. So again, like the other uh, World's Fairs, um, the narrative is, is that these were built as temporary structures so that they were easy to erect, cheap, and then uh, easily uh, taken down as well. Um, so Thomas Rogers Kimball and C. Howard Walk were named co-architects in chief of the event. The two men responsible for the overall site development, including perimeter buildings. They designed several major buildings, some smaller structures, and the Ark of States, which was a main entrance. I mean... For any any type of project management of a of a um, event this scale and the construction of this scale it would take much more than just two people. It really would. I mean, even back. I mean, I'm sure things. I know things were done different back then, but th this is a construction. Even though it's quite a bit smaller than the Chicago and St. Louis one, it's still a mammoth construction. And to have only two dudes um, design and project manage all of this, uh, highly unlikely. All these structures are temporary by design, built at about half the cost of permanent buildings. The lower cost allowed the construction of larger structures. The construction of the hundreds of temporary buildings at Expo was notable because of the most exclusive usage of a new, cheap, and pliable building material called stuff. Staff. 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 It allowed Expo designers to construct visual rep reproductions of Grecan and Roman temples, fine European buildings, and more. The buildings were constructed of strips of wood covered with stuff so um <clears throat> yeah so i had a look i've never really heard of stuff for it's a kind of artificial stone so um chiefly made by powered gypsum or plaster of paris so gypsum is commonly what's used on as our plasterboard and um on our ceilings we use gyp rock as well depending which country you're in and where you're from but um different countries have different building materials um the um 
And then so mixed with a little cement, uh, glycerin and dextrin mixed with water until it was about as thick as molasses. And then put into molds to strengthen. Um, so yeah, effectively what they're saying is that this was this was used. Um, so it was used in construction as the world's Columbian exhibition in Chicago in 1893 and also for this Omaha and the Buffalo expositions as well, which I'm going to um, discuss in a later video as well as Louisiana one as well. So which I've discussed in a previous two uh, episodes. So basically what they're um, stating is that these buildings were constructed from wood and this plaster of Paris material and all done so in a two and a half year period. And um, I mean, I just want to, Go back if you haven't seen my previous. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous videos, I'm just going to pull this one up. Um, is this the right one? This is so. This is the um, the St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, one, there's, where's my other one? This one here. Like, so I, I believe that the, in these different world's fairs, there were different um, buildings that were constructed. I, I'm pretty sure these two would have been constructed at the time. There's images with the, you know, workmen building them, et cetera. But the very, this is, this was constructed in that two and a half year period. It says it was or three years for St. Louis, but these other ones in the background here, were much older and the, and what works like construction works with these scaffolding etc is just really just um uh, repairs to the fascia um, painting and things like that so i mean this image here this is a um, palace of transportation notice the use of the word palace um because these are palaces i mean so they're so they're saying that all of these buildings of which you know dozens and dozens of them of this scale and this size were constructed with just wood and um, this stuff material, which is basically um, plaster um, with some sort of adhesive in it as well to harden it. Um, I mean, if, if I didn't know any better and I was looking at this, I would say these are all masonry construction, um, these buildings. They don't look like wood and um, plaster to me. And the lack of construction photos is what is really interesting with especially a number of these um, of these ones. So, so yeah. So that's sort of an overview of the of this. Um, Omaha, Nebraska one. I'm going to go into some of the construction photos now. So again, this one's given me a pause for thought, but there's a couple of things that have come up that are that are noticeable. I, it is potentially with this one, maybe this one was built by people of their times and, you know, what they, they stated in between that two and a half year period from sort of 1897, was it, to um, 1895 to... Uh, was it 1897 and it was open in 1898 um so what let me have a look at this again it was preferred site for, so there was another site at Florence Lake it's called that was a preferred, preferred site for the exposition in 1897 however Hunt's place was then decided so by early 1897 they still hadn't picked a site Towards the middle of the year, 1897, it still hadn't decided, but both sides ended up losing out to site North Omaha later in the year. So later in, <clears throat> let me make sure I've got this correct. It was preferred, preferred site for the exposition in early 1897, this um, Florence Lake.
Miller Park was considered the strongest contender towards the middle of the year. However, both sides ended up losing out to a site in North Omaha later in the year when Omaha banker Herman Kuntz donated land in, in, in his Kuntz Place development to the city of Omaha. After the expo, some of the land would become Kuntz Park. I am hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So by mid... So they wouldn't have started construction for, until like late 1897. And then they're saying it was opened in June 1898. I'm not getting that wrong, am I? Correct me if I'm getting that wrong. Later in the year. So at least until later in the year. And then within sort of a six-month period, they had them all constructed. So... <clears throat> I mean, this, this date here is like, this looks like some early, early photo you see November 14, 1897. So this is the, the beginning of the construction works. I just want to make mention and make note of these buildings in the background here. They look like typical residential buildings. Uh, you can see them in the background here as well. Uh, they're not anywhere depicted on this image here. So this aerial image, which looks like it was drawn in the 1700s or something like that, or the 1800s, does not show any. So this image shows, so this is the waterway there. You can see the head of it with the main sort of palaces or buildings, what they say palaces or buildings constructed here with homes immediately behind it. So that's in this pit, this part here. That's that. That circular section, the end of the, let me get the right one, end of it is there. It's that section there, and it looks like they're building these buildings here. There's all these homes behind it, right behind it. Looks like they've just put a fence across, a wall, some sort of temporary fence, and then there's homes that are built there, and they started constructing this. So that, that, that doesn't really make sense, right? Um, why wouldn't they, why weren't those these homes here, which are which look like they're quite extensive, it looks like a neighborhood, and in the back there too, why aren't they drawn in this? You'd think they would be, but they're not. So um so this is the administ view from there looking at the agricultural building. So we'll just go through some of these. So this is the liberal arts building. It's a construction and liberal arts building. You see the water, the main center waterway through here and the wooden construction here. Uh, what dates do we have? Again, end of 1897. So that's November 14th, 1897. November 28, 1899, so two weeks later. They're still constructing on it. January 30. They've done a, they've done a fair amount of work in this, getting this all altogether it's December 1897 I was try having a look at this compared to the um, which one is it? I've got all these tabs open ba -ba 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 -ba. My pass it. yeah so this image here this is the finished image and which one is it again that one it looks it looks like it is it. It does look like it. You see the spires four here. You sort of like little apex roofs on the on the sides here. These apex the spires. Um Grand Court, looking down. This one doesn't have a date on it. Again, there just doesn't seem to be many people working on this, though. That's that's the other thing I know. So unless I take these images on weekends, there's just people in suits walking around. And they're definitely not working. Umbrella, just having a look at some of the construction. January 30. Again, lots of wooden construction. December 5th, 1897. This is the waterway through here. I mean, these ones sort of look like the buildings have been mainly constructed. That one, 
I mean, that's a lot of work within sort of, what do we say, Not, say mid-November, go away, go away screen share, come on. So mid-November, come on, come on. Yes, yes, I know I'm screen sharing. Come on, go. Ah, what's going on here? How do you get rid of that? I don't use um, Zoom that often. Ah, oh, just started going away. There we go. Murphy's Law. Okay. Um, 1897. So mid-November 1897. Ah, oh, it's happening again. This is annoying. Hang on. Let me just sort this out. Bring that down there. So in six weeks, they'd constructed all of this. It's a it's a fair bit of work. Yeah, six weeks. All this had been constructed in the middle of their winter too, right? I mean, I don't know if it, does it snow. Anyone that lives in America, Midwest, may better help me with this. Does it snow in Nebraska at the end of the year? Um. So in the middle of winter, either way, in the middle of winter, I'm sure there's plenty of precipitation and rainfall that they um, they built all of this in a six-week period. It's quite an undertaking. And you can see the finishing off here. It's obviously you can see wood construction in through here. So that does look like some plaster mold through there. And then wood, what looks like wood construction through here too. I mean, this is November 28th, 1897. It's just a tremendous amount of work. Um, this must be the original photo we looked at here. Um, this one here, that's that area in here. Is this area? No, so we can date a little back a little bit further, say October 24th, 1897. So they probably started construction um, October, maybe September or something. October 31st. January 1st. Yeah, so, you know, typical wood construction. This one, not so much. You can't really see much of the inner details of it yeah so i'm i'm still not sure about it i mean if i want to go right down the uh conspiracy theory route one thing i could think of is that this was perhaps what was constructed here the buildings that were constructed here were in fact a replication maybe of the of the grounds um but that's a tremendous amount of so the, the grounds, these grounds were already here and like the other World's Fairs, they were repurposed for these World's Fairs for whatever um, agenda they were pushing, whatever whatever decisions were going on back then. Um, but potentially this particular fair, they reconstructed with wood materials um, and this plaster material. Um I'm wondering if this is the first. Yeah, so now Chicago was the first one to utilize it. And then this one. So then, then Buffalo, sorry. Um, no. Yeah, Omaha. So Chicago first, then this one we're looking at Omaha in 1898, and then Buffalo in 1901. Um, yeah, again, like I've got every belief that there were buildings that were constructed during this time frame that they said there were. Um, 
most and, and it's quite evident when you look at the photos which ones were built of the times and which ones were potentially much older and built by um, master craftsmen stonemasons uh, master builders like master designers um, and then which ones are actually yeah quite temporary and and shoddy looking um, I mean you can see there's no real machinery in any of these images of these ones it's just uh, like this looks like some sort of pylon machine or crane or something like that. Um, it's a bit hard to tell. There are some images with different cranes, not in this particular was fair, but others. But it's very minimal, any of the machinery that you see um, in these in any of these images. Not to say they're not there, but in the photos that we have, which are quite extensive, there seems to be like a, a real lack of um, of machinery that would help install this. Again, you can see this one here. You can see all these homes around it. Um, I mean, maybe again, because this is a stylized image, I wanted maybe the, this was a drawing that was um, created to show off the word exposition. They didn't want to show like it, that it was set amongst the neighborhood, but this looks very much like a parkland agricultural type area surrounding the um, these palace grounds. Um, whereas these images, of the photos of the construction of them actually show a lot of residential area around it, just normal type homes. So, yeah, interesting one. I'm not too sure on this one. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, quite possibly this was built in the timeline they said it was from, what, 1897, sort of September, October 1897 to June 1898. So we'll say a nine-month period. This whole thing was constructed in a nine-month period. This whole thing was constructed in a nine-month period. Um, however, that doesn't seem plausible. What may The only thing I can think of is that, yeah, they generally did construct something that was temporary and um, quite quickly, but it wasn't this it may have been a replica type setup for what purposes i don't know maybe to prove that it could be done to prove out there that the narrative that it could be done there's no other construction photos of the uh the chicago welfare the Colum that's columbus welfare the buffalo one the st missouri one there's no proper like from the ground up type of construction like like this one shows um the omaha one shows so Maybe this was done as, I don't know, I know this is getting really into the conspiracy thing, but maybe this one was done as like a prop to show that it can be done and it, that were constructed of their time. Um, but this isn't the true Omaha grounds. Um, I don't know. It's an interesting one. Uh, the timelines, again, just don't don't meet up with me. And, and you know, in the early in the video, I looked at, Looked at it and it looked like it was a two and a half year timeline. I mean, the two and a half year timeline was from from decision made to to have one in Omaha to actually it being opened. But the actual construction period looks like it was nine, maybe ten months at the most, which is just a not a very large amount of time there. Um, however, some of these photos, it, it definitely looks like they were able to construct and complete something in that time. Um, again, without the use of uh, any machinery, bobcats, excavators, cranes, workmen, it looks like. Again, just people walking around in in winter gear. Um, just it feels a bit suspect. Feels a bit suspect. So, yeah. All right. I think that's it for this one. Um, let me know if you have any comments about this, please, or questions. If you've looked at this one before, this one's a bit tricky for me. I have to admit, you could probably tell because there's obviously construction photos there. Um, it's the only fair that has these type of construction photos. However, there's still something about it that doesn't make sense to me, i.e. the ability to, to do this in a nine month period. Um, and to the, to the grandeur of it, to the scale of it as well. Um, again, as I stated earlier, this is a much smaller grounds and buildings than the other two that we've looked at previously. So I don't know, but um, 
yeah, it's still an interesting one. So, all right. Thanks very much, everyone. Again, any questions, comments, love uh, love the feedback um, that I've been getting in these videos. It's helped me a lot. Um, yeah, and I, I look forward to more of them. Thank you very much. Bye.